Stay close to me, sire. It's not so easy. Let's hope so. Deathmold, Sheila, meet me in my tent. You're to explain what the hell happened there, and how we're to get rid of it. As you command, Your Majesty. I'll tolerate no delays on this matter, and summon all my company commanders. Immediately, Your Majesty. Corporal, I'd like you to watch the Witcher closely. He just pulled me from a magic hell, so I doubt he wants my head as he took fall tests. But I'll not have him wandering round the camp like some stray dog. Occupy him for a time, then bring him to my tent. Sire, I must request an audience. Later. I'll see my mages first, then the Witcher. Ah, just lovely. And here I'd hope for a calm little war. Nowhere I might wet my throat around here. Roach, willing to vouch for this overgrown urchin? He did not kill Foltest or Demavend, if that's what you're asking. You've got my assurance on that. Good enough for me. Let's go then! Take me to the king. I've seen enough military camps in my day. That I cannot, Witcher. I'm to keep an eye on you, the king's orders. Really want to babysit me? You're right. Let's go. Ah, uh, yeah. Go straight to the royal tent. You can't miss it. I've a few things to take care of. Godspeed, Zivik. I'll be near the main gate if you need me. So long. Ha! A witcher! The king must have summoned him to fight the raids. You think? I'm certain. Ha! Let's see it feel. Nearly everyone hunts you, yet you live in spite of that. Impressive. In no small part thanks to you, Excellency. I've helped you, yes. I trust I shan't regret it. As do I. I wouldn't want to seem ungrateful. Are you seeking employment? I was unaware you fellows hired yourselves out for battle. My aim here is different. Really? Perhaps I can be of assistance. Foltest was a good king. Shame he ended that way. I've already conveyed the Emperor's condolences to Constable Mataras. Since we're talking about Temeria and Foltest, apparently the fallen king's advisor, the sorceress Triss Merigold, has disappeared in mysterious circumstances. Rumors abound. Do you know anything about her? Why do you ask, Excellency? I heard the two of you are... close. Mages have a natural tendency to disappear into thin air once in a while. Why is anyone concerned? Maybe they wonder if witches locked in dungeons possess the same capacity. You're avoiding the subject, which means it's uncomfortable for you. Have it your way, I shan't press. But I'll ask one more question, if I may. Of course, Your Excellency. I mentioned Triss because, I must admit, I am perturbed. Mages are known for their mutual envy and rivalry. 
I wonder if there's any matter that could unite them. Perhaps you could be a bit clearer, Excellency. Then I shall ask directly. Do you know anything about Merigold's involvement with an organization of sorceresses? Assuming, of course, that you are, theoretically, or have been, close. I'm not sure why the acquaintances of a sorceress would interest a Nilfgaardian ambassador. Many things interest me. Art, for example. A very interesting statuette was delivered to me today. A peculiar piece. Elusive. Sensuous. It forces one to think. Even a monster slayer might not be indifferent to the beauty entrapped within. Maybe. But I'm afraid I don't have time to admire art. Do you have any other queries? I have some matters to which I must attend. Why are you so interested in this organization of sorceresses? I wonder about some strange coincidences. I'm told several of them were seen in the vicinity when the assassination attempts occurred. What's so suspicious about that? Mages have always thronged around monarchs, the source of power and coin. I'm not accusing anyone. I merely said, it makes me wonder. I saw you with Foltest before. Now you're with Henselt. No doubt you'll visit the King of Redania next. I need not go far. Radovid is en route to Loch Muin. Perhaps he has already arrived. We'll meet there. Loch Muin? An ancient elven city quite a ways away, near the source of the Pontar. Why there? The mages wish to re-establish their council. They sent out invitations to all the kings. What's the Emperor's envoy doing here? Satisfy my curiosity. The last unfortunate conflict left the Northern Kingdoms in pitiful economic condition. His Imperial Majesty desires stability. We wish to offer financial assistance, so I'm visiting those lands hardest hit by the war. Henselt is coping admirably as far as I can see. The details of my visit here are reserved for the Emperor and the Kedweni King. I need to know everything. <laughs> Magic will not help you. I'm very well protected against such attempts. Greetings, Geralt. Foltest's killer forced Triss to teleport him to Vergen. They're somewhere nearby. That nosy little meddler, Triss, used my megascope to accomplish that. But I suppose I should be grateful. After all, I might have been the Kingslayer's victim. Even if Triss is in Vergen, I cannot locate her. This damn fog prevents any kind of magical probing. It's pretty obvious you and Deathmold don't exactly get along. Deathmold is an overgrown baby. A fine match for King Henselt. The problem is that he's as jealous as he is childish. He claims I wish to steal his position at the Kedweni court. Nothing could be more absurd. Know how to remove a tattoo? No problem. I'd need some green mold, white myrtle petals, and wolf's aloe. I'll be back once I've found the ingredients. I'd assumed that after killing the Cairn, the Pontar Valley would hold no further interest for you. You know nothing about me, Witcher. I'm here because two northern monarchs were murdered. It's quite probable Henselt is next on the list. We don't need another country descending into chaos. King Henselt cannot die. I'll make sure of that. Come in, Witcher. I wish you to feel at ease as this is an unofficial audience. You help me in the mist, thus I surmise you do not seek my death. Which leads me to ask, what you do seek here, Geralt of Rivia? Justice. A slippery thing, I'd say. It really depends on your point of view. So, you claim you did not kill Foltest. Do you know who did? A witcher named Letho. Do you know each other? I don't know. I have amnesia. Letho has suggested he knows something about me. It's possible we met before. There's an old kid when he's saying, a bitch will never bite another bitch. 
A hundred percent accurate where sorceresses are concerned. To the matter at hand, sire. De Tarsaville claims this letho is in the area. Is that true? Yes. What does he want here? My head? He's hiding from Yorvith and his Scoyatel. I don't know his plans. And you aim to get him? I do. Last question. Do you know who had Foltest and Demavend assassinated? Who's behind the Kingslayers? I don't know, but I'll find out when I find Letho. My spies have confirmed your words. I suppose I must believe you. Now to the other matter. The mist, the wraiths, all that magic shit holding up my campaign. My mages, as usual, have proved useless. They blather on about higher magic, delayed curses and other hogwash, but nothing comes of it. This matter must be settled with a sword. A witcher's sword. Will you manage this task? Yeah, I'll manage. Excellent! Lift the curse, and you'll learn the meaning of royal generosity. And even should you fail to catch this letho, I shall help you clear your name. Consider Deathmold at your disposal. He'll give you all the necessary information. Also, you are free to move about the camp and its environs from now on. Now, leave me alone. The curse was cast three years ago. Any sign it's been active in the interim? Is that important? Sire, we're not talking about a fortune told in a tent on market day, nor about some curse cast by a novice mage. This curse caused a solar eclipse and summoned hordes of specters. We're dealing with a complex spell that operates at several levels. Uncommon knowledge and skill were required to cast it. Lifting it will be even more difficult. If I'm going to deal with it, I need you to cooperate. Ah, the plague. So be it. As we forged our way through the fog, you claimed it was Glevisig's curse. Sabrina Glevisig's. She was a sorceress. My former advisor. I ordered her bound to a wagon wheel and burned alive. While dying, she cursed me and my lineage. That was three years ago. What did you condemn Sabrina for, sire? One year after the Peace of Sintra, I fought Demervin for Lormark. General Vandergrift commanded a part of my force. He forded the Pontar and joined battle on this field. It raged until evening, when Sabrina Glevesig decided to take matters into her own hands. Fireballs rained down onto the battlefield. Three thousand men turned to bloody charred meat scraps. The fire consumed Kedwenis and Adernians alike. Knights boiled alive in their armor. Mad beasts howling with pain. War is for the honorable. When the likes of Glevesig enter the fray, it turns into hell. What drove Sabrina to attack her own army? Any specific reason? I've heard none, not even speculation. She was my advisor, a member of the Council of Mages. For years I was forced to tolerate her excesses, schemes, court scandals. Was she loyal? Ha! <laughs> Only to herself. Sire, do you remember the curse itself? What exactly did Sabrina say? All she said at the time has been fulfilled to some degree. A star adorned with a bloody braid will cut across the heavens. Square coins from maritime depths will beguile the hearts of fools. Coins? Deathmold found a few such coins among soldiers accused of treason. 